was spiked on a night out. Ever since I was in primary school I have been warned that some people in the world want to hurt others. Sometimes they do that by slipping something into your drink so you can't fight back. Women are given every cautionary tale, list of red flags, and mechanisms of defense out there. From reactive nail polish to bottle tops that stop anything from falling in, we feel like we're covered. I genuinely believed that it would never happen to me. I truly thought that men that spike drinks look like obvious criminals, lurking in the dark corner of a bar, potentially wearing an eye patch and laughing an evil laugh to themselves periodically. But they don't, I think. All I can remember about the men, yes, plural, who spiked my drinks is that they wore posh city boy work shirts that were so white they almost glowed and they all had quaffed hair. You know the type. Banker wankers with loafers and a trust fund who at some point in their life have played soggy biscuit while away at boarding school in the countryside. By the way, I'm not saying that all men like that are druggers or rapists. I'm just recalling what mine looked like. The night that it happened, I was on a date. It was going well. We had met for a drink in Burrow, gone for a wander, and more drinks, along the river and by the end of that we were quite drunk. It was at this point we decided to venture into Shoreditch for a dance and more drinks. We spent the next few hours dancing terribly, drinking more, and snogging. Lots of snogging. Later, my date excused himself to go to the bathroom and I never saw him again. It turns out that this group of men had found my date who was on his way back to our table. And they had told him that I had left. I'm not too sure on the specifics but they told him that I had a change of heart and decided to leave. So he left too. It was around 3 or 4 a.m. at this point and both our phones had died. Just think how simple and easy this whole thing could have been if we'd have bothered to charge our phones. After a period of waiting, I got up to wander over to the boys' loose to see where he was. Don't worry. I didn't go in, I just shouted through the doorway. But he wasn't there. Maybe I missed him, I thought. It's around this point that my memory starts to get a bit patchy, so bear with me. I went back to our seats. He wasn't there. I thought, ever the optimist, that he was at the bar or outside smoking. I sat back down and waited for him. I now know that I was naive and should have just called it a night but I actually kind of liked him. As I was waiting for the date that was never going to come back the leader of a band of merry assholes decided to come over to my table. Come and hang out with me and my friends. No, thank you, I'm waiting for someone. Oh come on, just come and have a drink, I'll buy. Nope, I have a drink and I'm waiting for my date. Oh come on, it'll be fun. No, I'm with someone and I don't want to. Don't kid yourself. He isn't coming back. I saw him leg it when he left the toilet. I don't know whether it was the fact that he had reiterated my suspicion that I'd been ditched or whether his incessant inability to take no for an answer, but I just couldn't deal with it anymore. I remember swearing, I remember my face feeling hot in anger and my eyes stinging with tears. But the exact content of my rant is known only to the man I yelled at, if he even remembers, which I doubt. He left. I am still unsure whether he walked off with his tail between his legs, in fear from the bollocking he just received, or if he just swaggered off. I'd love my words to have cut him in such a way that it was the former, but sadly I think it was the latter. Hindsight is a bitch. If I had thought about what he was doing, I probably shouldn't have drunk from my glass which he was playing with coyly as he sat on the table and leaned across it to block my vision. In fact, what I should have done is just taken my miserable self-pitying self to bed and maybe stopped for some nuggets on the way. But I didn't. I sat there stewing in anger and self-pity, sipping the last remnants of my vodka and coke. I could see out of the corner of my eye that group of men who had been harassing me were all just watching me like vultures. Their bodies positioned to face me, they were chatting animatedly but their eyes never left my person. I felt violated without ever being touched. I have to say now that I can handle my drink. Sometimes it gets a bit out of control but I know what I'm like when I am drunk, 
I know my limits and I know, when I'm alone, when to get the F out of Dodge. I am.